Welcome everyone to this episode of the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, where we dig deep to find you some of the strangest and most chilling stories currently happening all around the world. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Here are the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for August 2023. Number 5. Tragic Mystery of Rachel Morin The silence of Maryland's forests was shattered by a grim discovery on Sunday, August 6th. A horrifying event had occurred on the picturesque Mon Pa Trail in Bel Air, which left the entire community in shock and mourning. Rachel Moran, a 37-year-old devoted mother of five, had taken to this peaceful trail for a run. Known for her dedication to her family and love for the outdoors, this Saturday evening routine was nothing out of the ordinary. However, this particular run would soon transform into a murder mystery that no one saw coming. By late Saturday night, Moran's absence became alarming. What should have just been a short run stretched on, and still no word from her. Her concerned boyfriend, Richard Tobin, filed a missing persons report noting that it had been five long hours since she'd embarked on her run, a duration that far exceeded her usual routine. Tobin's worries amplified upon discovering Morin's car eerily abandoned at the trailhead. It looked like she had most certainly gone out into the woods, but never came back. The community, upon hearing the news, feared the worst, and those fears materialized the following day when a volunteer moved by the heartbreaking plea for help on social media, came across what they believed to be Morin's lifeless body along the trail. Sheriff Jeff Gaylor of the Hartford County Police, without hesitation, classified the case as a homicide, citing indicators that clearly pointed in that direction. The words from Rebecca Morin, Rachel's sister, captured the gravity of the situation. This was not an accidental death, and she did not go willingly, though the actual cause of death and location have been kept under wraps. With the investigative spotlight shining brightly on the case, suspicion and speculations have spiraled. Richard, deeply distraught by the loss of his beloved Rachel, was compelled to address the public amidst the whirlwind of accusations, referencing his checkered past. I love Rachel. I would never do anything to her, he implored. Yes, I have a past, but I also have 15 months clean and have changed as a person. Please, let the family and I grieve. As the investigation intensified, Morin's death became a viral topic, becoming the most talked about case on social media in the department's history. Sheriff Gaylor recognized this, emphasizing the importance of public collaboration urging anyone with potential leads or surveillance footage to come forward. While the Hartford County community grapple with the tragic loss of a devoted mother, their unity shone through. As Sheriff Galler remarked, many people didn't know Rachel, but they stopped their day and they conducted their own help. The mystery of Rachel's untimely death remains. As investigators delve deeper into the woods and into the enigma of her demise, we hope for justice and solace for the grieving family. Number 4. The Glenview Country Club Incident Florida has its share of mysteries, from haunted mansions to unsolved disappearances. But on June 28th, a tragic incident at the Glenview Country Club in Central Florida brought an eerie silence over the otherwise peaceful golfing community. The case baffled authorities until a seemingly unrelated hole-in-one photograph would uncover some interesting details. Robert Moore Jr., 74-year-old resident of Florida, was leading a relatively quiet, retired life. The recent achievement of a hole-in-one at the Tar Palm Boyle Executive Golf Course, he was the talk of the town after a local article covered his success. But that very article would play a significant role in a grievous episode that had happened at Glenview. As per the records, on that Wednesday, June 28th, an 87-year-old man was easing into a parking spot when he accidentally bumped into the bumper of a black Lexus. It was a minor incident, 
one that could have been resolved amicably with an apology and exchange of insurance details. However, what ensued was an act of rage and violence that would change the lives of many. Eyewitnesses say more in an apparent fit of anger confronted the older man accusing him of hitting his car. Even after the victim admitted to the mistake and offered his insurance information, Moore's temper didn't subside. He allegedly delivered a fierce blow to the victim, who, unable to defend himself, took the brunt of the attack. As the minutes passed and the adrenaline subsided, Moore then came to a shocking realization. That black Lexus wasn't even his car. Making a hasty retreat from the scene, Moore went about his evening, unaware of the tragic aftermath of his impulsive act. The distressing series of events were recorded on the surveillance cameras of the nearby Country Club's restaurant, which captured Moore's movements before and after the altercation. From enjoying a meal to rushing back into the establishment, knocking into a server, spilling drinks, and then abruptly leaving, every step was caught on tape. But the severity of the incident became truly apparent when authorities noticed the deteriorating condition of the elderly victim. Slurring words, struggling to stand upright, the victim's health rapidly declined, leading him to be transported to a nearby hospital. The diagnosis was grim, internal bleeding in the brain. Despite medical interventions, he was later placed in hospice care, passing away less than a month after the altercation due to the sustained trauma. The hunt for the perpetrator was now in full swing. Authorities, with the help of the surveillance footage, traced back to Moore using his credit card details. The most unexpected clue came from a Google search leading them to an article about Moore's hole-in-one achievement. And there he was, in the exact same attire he had worn on the day of the assault. Confronted with the overwhelming evidence Moore gave his account of the day, he believed the victim was going to flee the scene and acted to prevent him, and he claimed the elderly man even grabbed his shirt and arm, prompting Moore's aggressive response, yet his version was inconsistent with the evidence. As the case gained momentum, Robert found himself arrested and charged with the aggravated manslaughter of an elderly person. However, he was released on bond with an arraignment set for September as to what will happen to him, if anything, remains to be seen. Number 3. The Apathetic Age of Aliens The digital age has given birth to countless new frontiers of understanding and communication. Social media has connected the world in ways we've never imagined, and it appears that sometimes, in a world saturated with information, even the most startling of revelations can be met with surprising indifference. Recently, as I'm sure you've heard, in a quiet room of Capitol Hill, the House Oversight Subcommittee on National Security, the Border, and Foreign Affairs held a hearing. The topic? UFOs or, as they now term them, UAPs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. Lawmakers push for more transparency, not just as a nod to the long-standing conspiracy theories, but out of genuine concerns for national defense. For decades, the mention of UFOs has been synonymous with conspiracy. Whispers of extraterrestrial visits, government cover-ups, and sci-fi scenarios fill both niche online forums and mainstream conversations. You remember the fervor surrounding Area 51 in 2019, those calls to storm the base. The public then was obsessed and curious and full of belief. But as the news broke out recently about the government's legit possession of non-human biological matter, so in other words, aliens, The expected storm of interest was replaced with indifference. Online, where one would anticipate fervent discussions and heated debates, there was an unusual calm. So how can that be? This is literally the biggest news we've ever been told. Is it because we haven't actually been shown the photos or aliens? Possibly. 
Although you could certainly argue that over the years we have seen them. Hundreds of them. And perhaps that's only part of the answer, though. In our world where we are so caught up with what's right in front of us, actual threats and discussions that affect us in the now it might just be too much for our brains to try and take on the idea of aliens and UFOs. And if they are out there, great, so long as they're not bothering us. On X, comments seem lackluster at best. Memes popped up, not out of shock or intrigue, but more as an irony of how indifferent people felt. One user said, It's funny, they were talking about UFOs and non-human biologics in a hearing yesterday, and nobody is paying any attention. Another pointedly said, They announcing that aliens are real and not one person moved. The times have changed. Many argued that life on Earth was so tumultuous, so chaotic, that even the confirmation of extraterrestrial existence didn't rattle the collective consciousness. Amid economic challenges, global warming, and personal struggles, the possibility of aliens seems secondary, almost irrelevant. Perhaps in a world full of immediate challenges, the allure of the unknown has lost its shine. Or maybe, just maybe, We've reached an age where the acknowledgement of extraterrestrial life is not a shock, but an expected turn of events. Whatever the reason, the world's reactions to this startling revelation was a mystery in and of itself, challenging our notions of curiosity and concern in the modern age. Number 2. The Mysterious Disappearance of Alicia Navarro The bustling heart of Phoenix, Arizona, mother's worst nightmare unfolded on September 5th of 2019. Alicia Navarro, a 14-year-old with a disposition that could be described as shy and anxious due to her placement on the autism spectrum, had vanished. A note later found in her room hinted at the decision to run away, a move that her mother, Jessica Nunez, considered uncharacteristic of her daughter. The time crawled by, but no leads as to where she went or what happened to her came about. The days turned to months, but even as the seasons changed, the fervor around Alicia's disappearance didn't wane. Thanks to the efforts of Jessica, the Finding Alicia Facebook page was created, drawing thousands to aid in the search for the young girl. The community's dedication was palpable, with regular updates, shared stories, and messages of hope. Yet, the twists and turns of this heart-wrenching tale took an unexpected dive into darker territory. The line between genuine concern and morbid fascination slowly became blurred. It wasn't long before Jessica found herself and her family at the mercy of the vast world of online speculation. The supporters, once a comforting presence, had become an intrusive force. Internet users started to scrutinize the case, some blaming the family and even arriving uninvited to the Nunez household and threatening Alicia's safety. Now recently, just as hope seemed to be dwindling, nearly four years after her initial disappearance, Alicia suddenly resurfaced. But this wasn't in the familiar landscape of Phoenix, The girl walked into a police station in a small Montana town near the Canadian border. And now an 18-year-old, she willingly identified herself as a missing girl from Arizona. The moment was bittersweet for Jessica. While the relief of knowing her daughter was safe washed over her, it came with a backdrop of intensifying public scrutiny. From the outside, it seemed as if Alicia had simply vanished on a whim only to willingly return. Glendale police, while confirming Alicia's safety, remained tight-lipped, only stating that the circumstances of her departure were under investigation. But for Jessica, her plea was clear and heartfelt. Through a video on the very page dedicated to finding her daughter, she asked the world for understanding and privacy. Urging everyone to stop the online speculations Jessica's voice quivered with a mixture of gratitude and desperation. She thanked everyone for their unwavering support, but reminded them that their life wasn't a movie to be discussed and analyzed. 
Alicia's case, though, still remained shrouded in mystery. From her sudden departure, the note hinting at escape, to her unexpected return, many questions persist. Law enforcement's comments on Alicia's state of well-being provide solace, but the air of ambiguity remains. Where has she been? Who has she been living with? It's very possible the world might never truly understand what drove Alicia away and what, in turn, prompted her to return. And maybe it's none of their business anyway. Number one, the suitcases of Delray Beach. Nestled along the southeastern coast of Florida, Delray Beach is renowned for its pristine sandy shores and vibrant art scene. Yet last month, its tranquility was wobbled by a scary discovery along the intercoastal waterway. On July 21st, the city's peaceful ambiance was interrupted when police officers responding to a distress call stumbled upon something macabre. Inside a discarded suitcase, small rocks weighed down a gruesome find, a pair of human legs. Just a few yards away from that, another suitcase surfaced, revealing a human torso, hands, and more small rocks. The trail didn't end there, though. Detectives, acting on information from the local news station, WPEC, learned about yet another suitcase, which contained a woman's pelvis. Not far off, there was a cheesecake factory bag eerily out of place. The most chilling discovery was yet to come. A tote bag fastened with a man's belt revealed a decapitated human head, bearing the mark of a gunshot wound. The serene waterway had now transformed into a serious crime scene. Delray Beach police detective Michael Liberta spearheaded the investigation. And through rigorous interviews, multiple witnesses described seeing a man, later identified as 78-year-old William Lowe, near the area where the suitcases were found. Some brave souls even confronted the suspect as to what he was doing, but he promptly escaped in a gold Ford Taurus. Surveillance footage later substantiated these accounts, revealing Lowe making trips down a dock, clutching the familiar Cheesecake Factory bag. The mounting evidence led detectives to Lowe's residence and inside the house unveiled its dark secrets. There was blood splatter and police recovered a firearm. Under pressure, Lowe claimed that his wife, 80-year-old Adil Fontes, had been in Brazil for three weeks. A lie that quickly fell apart when dental records tragically identified the dismembered remains as those of Fontes. The subsequent search of Lowe's storage unit unveiled more horrors. A chainsaw stained with blood, bone fragments, and human hair was recovered. In a dark corner, a cooler with suspicious red stains sat. The shocking conclusion drawn by investigators painted a scene of domestic horror. Lowe, it appears, shot his wife in their apartment and then gruesomely dismembered her before scattering her remains in suitcases and bags along the peaceful intercoastal waterway. On August 3rd, in a courtroom, echoing with widespread shock and grief, Lowe was denied bond. He now resides behind the bars of the Palm Beach County Main Detention Center, awaiting his fate. As Delray Beach attempts to heal, this harrowing incident serves as a stark reminder of the unspeakable acts that can unfold behind closed doors, even in the most idyllic of locations. So there were the strange and scary mysteries of the month for August 2022. Please do like and subscribe and check out some more of our content if you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon.